In this first lecture, I'm going to describe the simplest of all quantum physical systems, the qubit, short for quantum bit. To do that, I first have to explain how physical systems are described in quantum theory. The central idea of computer science is that of a computational variable or memory location, a place where information can be stored at one time and perhaps processed and later retrieved. Classical physics has a very similar concept to that, um, a degree of freedom. The degrees of freedom of a classical system are the real numbers that specify its configuration. For instance, a point particle would have three degrees of freedom because three real numbers are necessary to specify its position in space at a given instant. In quantum physics, the closest thing to a degree of freedom is an observable. Just as in classical physics, any attribute of a physical system that could in principle be prepared with a value that could in principle be measured is a quantum observable. But a quantum observable can't be summed up as a mere number like the value of a degree of freedom at a given time. There's a lot more to it than that. And it takes a while to get to grips with this concept. The word observable might even be misleading, since what we see of a physical object is part of a larger object extending across many universes. A quantum observable refers to what we see and its counterparts in other universes, and it contains information about the structure of the multiversal object. So, the angle between these two rods which would be deemed a degree of freedom if this system were described in classical physics, is in fact a quantum observable. This protractor is a measuring instrument that can be used either to prepare that observable with a given value or to measure its value to some degree of accuracy. Let me call that observable theta hat of t. I'll always use this hat symbol or caret for observables to stress that they're not numbers. If I were to measure the angle at time t and the outcome was, say, 37 degrees, it would still be quite false to write theta of t equals 37. That's an observable. It refers to the whole multiversal object in many universes. That's a number. It just refers to the universes in which the outcome was 37. Strictly speaking, the measuring instrument also includes the light which I use to align the protractor with the rods. That's because for any measurement to work, something has to be affected by the physical system in question. And in this case, it's light that's affected by the rods and then by the protractor and carries information about them to my eye. For each memory location in a computer, there's a finite set of possible values that can be stored in it. For instance, one bit can hold two possible values. A byte, consisting of eight bits, can hold any one of two to the eight, or 256 different values. In the quantum theory, similarly, each observable, x hat, is associated with a set of possible ways in which it could be prepared and which could later be distinguished from each other by measuring x. Each of these ways of preparing x or possible outcomes of measuring x is given a distinct label which is a real number. This set of labels is called the spectrum of x and it's written like this. For example, the spectrum of the angle theta hat, measured in degrees, might be the set of all real numbers between, say, 10 degrees and 170 degrees. So 